everyone thank you for watching today's video i'm excited to do it is going to be a full face using some of my favorite products that can be found at sephora so i'm going to show you how i got this look the sephora holiday bonus event is still going on right now i'll have the dates for the sale and codes and all of that in my description box I did post a video earlier this week kind of going through my loves list and sharing what I recommend, uh, maybe what to avoid from the sale, and also sharing my wish list. I did place an order. I will have a haul coming as soon as I get my box in and I can film that. I will be sharing my haul and what I picked up from the sale, but I thought it would be fun to do another video kind of focusing some more on some of my absolute favorites from Sephora, but also showing you how I use them, how they apply, and all of that. So if you want to see how I got this look and hear some more about my Sephora favorites when we go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and start with the eyes. I'm using the Urban Decay Naked Honey Palette. This palette released fairly recently and I think that it is a really nice one. I would definitely recommend it um, to get the discount or I just would recommend it in general. I think that it's a really nice palette. When I first saw it, I really wasn't quite sure because the first promo photos were making this look like it was a very different palette in my opinion and I did receive it from Urban Decay and the first time I opened it I was like whoa this looks a lot better um, than I was thinking that it was going to be. Uh, before we jump into the palette though I'm actually going to prime my eyes also from Urban Decay. Uh, this is the eyeshadow primer potion so I know that this is a really loved on uh, eyeshadow primer. It is pricey though so again could be nice to get the discount also with this one so I'm just gonna run it on my eyelid and then use my finger to blend it out uh, but going back to the naked honey like I said I think that it's a really nice palette I'm gonna do kind of like a just a simple halo eye today I've done a lot of looks with this palette and I've gotten a ton of compliments on each one I've done a lot of halo eyes with this too and I've done some grungier tones with like the shadows in the middle here but I'm actually going to focus a little bit more on these three shadows on the end and uh yeah I've I've been liking this palette a lot though so I'm first going to come in with the shade hive and I'm just using a sigma tapered blending brush this is the e35 and I'm just going to go ahead and start to Blend that on the outer part of my eye and along the crease and bring it all the way in. Sometimes with halo eyes, I truly only use two shades. I'll use uh, one shade for the inner and outer part of my eye. And I'll use another shade as the spotlight, like the, the halo in the center. Sometimes I'll come in with a third shadow to blend it. It just usually depends on what colors I'm using or, you know, sometimes it just matters like what side of the bed did I wake up on that day? You know, you never really know what you're going to be feeling. So um, today I decided that I wanted to use a third blending color. Okay, starting the spotlight portion, I'm taking a brush from Carity. This is the E30. It's just a little bit more pointed than the blending brush. And coming into the shade right next to it, this is Drip. And I'm going to focus Drip on the outer part of the eye and then also bring it into the inner corner. And I'm just going to blend it along into the Hive shade and kind of flick it out here towards the end too. And I just take my time, build that color up, and then usually after I do whatever's in the center, I'll come back and add a little bit more to the inner and outer part of my eye. So again, I like to use a smaller pointed brush for the halo eyes because for the inner corner, I just get the brush right up in here, and that's where I deposit the color. And then for the halo part, I'm going to use the shade HBIC. I'm using a brush from ColourPop. This is the E1. And I think that this palette is really nice, especially in comparison with other Urban Decay palettes, because I feel like the mattes blend more easily. And I also feel like the shimmers pop without having to use a shimmer shade. When I was first trying out this palette, a lot of times I like to try shadows dry just to get an idea. Um, I don't mind getting my brush damp to use shimmers because sometimes it can help with fallout and again sometimes it just makes shades pop more. But I do like to see what palettes do you not need it because I know that not everyone wants to do that. And I feel like the Naked Honey is a palette where you don't need to use a damp brush with the shimmers because they perform really well on their own. Uh, again, so I'm just wanting to show you what it looks like dry. I am actually going to add a bit of spray because again, I, 
I typically just always do at this point. Um, but also, I like to give it even more of a well bam, especially with halo eyes. I like that middle shade to be really pronounced. So I'm just putting it onto the ColourPop shader brush and patting it along the middle of my eye. And I do bring it up into the crease too. When I do halo eyes, a lot of times I bring that shimmer all the way up into the crease. So that's it dry. And then I'm just gonna use a little bit of spray. And I'm just gonna do one pass with my damp brush and apply that HBIC shade right over. And then again with Halo Eyes, I kind of just play around until I have everything where I want it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the drip shade to the inner and outer part. Sometimes I need to build up the shimmer a little bit more. But I like Halo Eyes because I think that they're just like super easy, which I like easy. I like quick, I like easy. So I go for them quite a bit. And then you also gotta make sure your eyes are even. So I'm just gonna kind of look at both and see where I need to add more shadow. Okay, I'm gonna leave the eyes there for a little bit and move over to the face. So First Aid Beauty has some really nice primers. The one that I'm gonna be using today is the Pores Be Gone Matte Primer. Uh, they also have the Coconut Skin Smoothing like Moisturizing Primer. That is a really nice one too, and I use that one a lot, but um, yeah, First Aid Beauty definitely has a lot of good primers if you're looking to try a new one um, or if you're, you know, if you have First Aid Beauty and you're running low on one, the sale is a good time to pick it up, but I do really like this matte primer. For foundation, I wanted to use the new one from Fenty Beauty. This is their Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation. I have the shade 200. It's a little light for me right now, but we will make it work. This does have a pump on it, so I'm just going to do a few pumps onto my damp sponge. This is the one from Ofra. I actually don't have a sponge um, from Sephora to recommend, which was kind of odd, but like I like the Ofra sponge. I like the Dose of Colors. I like... Um, Sonia Kashuk, Sigma, Sigma's sister brand, Pract, or something like that. They have a nice sponge. Um, Morphe, L'Oreal, like I don't know, just I don't have a, a sponge from Sephora to use. So I just thought that I would grab this one here from Ofra. So I'm going to go ahead and blend that into my skin. I did recently do... A ranking new foundations video. It has like Pat McGrath, Shiseido, Charlotte Tilbury, Kevin Aquan. Um, but the ranking new foundations that I did prior to that one has the Fenty Beauty in there. And uh, I, I really like this foundation. I ranked it very highly. I have some good things to say about it. So I can link those videos in my description box definitely. I'm gonna bring it down onto my neck also. But I really like this Fenty. I like the finish to it. It's very natural, which I prefer. And you also get a nice medium coverage. So still things are being covered, but it's not too, like it's just not too much. I'm not, I'm not a huge full coverage gal. So with the finish, the wear time, and the coverage of this foundation, I definitely would recommend the new one from Fenty. For concealer, I'm going to use a favorite. This is from Too Faced. This is the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. I'm going to use the shade Nude. This is just a favorite of mine. I know a lot of people really like this concealer. And I actually didn't even mention it in my recommendations video. Um, which again, I was just kind of going off of my like current loves list and all of that. But... This is definitely a favorite of mine. Uh, I've been using it for such a long time, recommending it for such a long time, and I do highly recommend. I know a lot of people really enjoy this concealer, and I just think that it's so nice. It's more of a full coverage concealer, but it's not too dry. It's really easy to blend out, and it just makes the under eyes look so nice. I highly recommend this one. It's just one of my favorites right now. And when you do your eyes first, a lot of times I do my face, then my eyes, but sometimes I'll switch it around. But you can use the concealer to also clean up the shadows and make it more of like a sharp line out here. So that's what I'm doing. 
with this concealer also I'm just making sure it's all blended in and then for my powder i'm using this one from lawless beauty this is the seal the deal loose setting powder i have the shades classic and translucent um no i have the shades classic and brightening i'll just use the brightening on my under eyes um but if i'm using classic i can use this all over my face too and on my under eyes so i tend to reach for the classic just a little bit more but i think that it's a really nice loose powder so i'm just gonna apply some to my under eyes again using that ofra sponge it's really lightweight i don't like powders that are too heavy i have more dry under eyes so i really need something that's lightweight that's not gonna make it look too heavy or makeupy. and i feel like i don't hear a ton of people talking about the lawless powder but i think that it's a really good option and then i'm just gonna do a little bit of powder on the rest of my skin to set the foundation for my contour shade i'm going to use this one here from makeup forever i've had this one for a very long time but this is the s112 so it's a little bit more cool toned it's just in a magnetic powder it's in a magnetic pan so i usually have it in one of my palettes but i just popped it out for this video i'm going to using a brush from the moda metallics line this is the buffer brush I'm just gonna go ahead and use the shade to contour. For bronzer, using a favorite of mine, and a great one to get if you have a discount. This is from Marc Jacobs. This is the Omega Bronze in Tantastic. So this is one of my Big Daddy bronzers, has a beautiful mirror on it. I'm gonna use one of my Big Daddy brushes to go along with my Big Daddy bronzer. That is the Morphe R2. I just love this bronzer. I did a video recently ranking all of my bronzers and this one's real high up there, let me tell you. I just love a good natural bronzer and kind of like one of those, like no matter how much I use or how much I build it up, like it still just looks really pretty. Like it's so hard to go overboard with this bronzer. I'm also gonna add some to the forehead. Okay, I went ahead and did my brows off camera, but uh, brow products that I really love that you can find at Sephora is from Benefit. The Precisely My Brow and the Goof Proof are just two of my continued favorites, two of my holy grails. I'm gonna go ahead and do my blush. This is from Buxom. This is their Wonderlust Primer Infused Blush in Seychelles. Again, I ranked all of my blushes recently and I love this one. I love the color. I love the glowy finish that it gives. And I'm going to use uh, the Sigma F40 for my Buxom blush. Mm. <laughs> Just makes me happy when I apply this one. <laughs> For my setting spray, Urban Decay has a great setting sprays. This one here is the Chill Makeup Setting Spray, but definitely recommend their sprays. I think they're great, especially if you want really long lasting makeup. These ones help so much. Coming back to finish off the eyes, the Milk Makeup uh, Longwear Gel Eyeliners. Yes, Longwear Gel Eyeliners. These are so, so nice. I know that eyeliners aren't like the sexiest thing in makeup to talk about, but I love eyeliners and these ones are so good. I've been talking about them for the longest time. Uh, this particular shade that I have here is in S C E O. I was going to say SEO. <clears throat> you know that I've been working way too hard and trying to update my blog when I'm talking ooh, about SEO and I'm almost falling off my chair. Hello, let's get it together. But I'm just going to add this to my waterline and also a little bit to the tight line. These glide so easily onto the waterline and they really are long wearing they just show up so well there's no tugging to them there's no like pulling across your eyes and they just really stay and they have a good um they have like a decent variety of colors like they have brown and black they have some with shimmer they have more matte they have navy they have a really pretty cream in bcc uh, that i think is really nice too and then coming back into the naked honey palette Let's see, what do I want to do? Um, for the lower lash line, I think I'm just going to kind of mimic what we did on the lid. I'm going to mix Hive and Drip together on that uh, Carity E30. And I'm going to run that on the lower lash line. And then we'll add a little bit of HBIC in the middle as that spotlight shade. 
And then just taking HVIC just back on that color pop brush. I'm just going to put a little like right on the tip of it and then pop that right in the center. Just a little something, not too crazy on the lower lash line, but just gives it a little pop of shimmer down here too. Sometimes, especially when I do halo eyes, I get pretty dark in the inner part. Like it kind of spills over into this part of my eye. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the first shade in here, which is a flyby on a small detail brush. And I'm just going to add it to the inner corner just to kind of lighten it up over here. Because I don't know, guys, I just can't stop my brush from going like all the way. Like even if I just want it like right here it's somehow going to end up like over here on my eye so just taking a lighter shade and adding it kind of to the tear duct area helps just lighten everything up again and it's a nice um inner corner highlight also and then i'm going to take that same shade and just add a little bit to the brow bone also for a brow bone highlight for mascara, this is one of my favorites, NARS Climax. I've gone through a full size. I have a mini here. I highly recommend this mascara, one of my favorites. It just doesn't move, makes the lashes look so good, but I don't deal with any sort of transfer on my, like it doesn't transfer onto my face throughout the day. I just think that it's a really long wearing mascara formula and it makes my lashes look so nice. Okay, so eyes are done. I'm gonna finish off my face for highlighter using the Natasha Denona Super Glow Highlight. I have the shade Fair, and I'm going to use my Sigma FO3 to apply it. This is one of my favorite highlights. It is very expensive though, it's very expensive. So even though I love it and I recommend it, I would say getting it at a discount is the way to go, okay? It's the way to go. To finish it off with lips, I'm going to use two products from Charlotte Tilbury. One is her Lip Cheat Lip Liner. I have the shade Iconic Nude. I purchased this recently from Sephora myself and I love it. I'm actually going to go sharpen it though because we need it to be a little bit sharper than this. I have sharpened it quite a few times. I use this lip liner so much. I think it's great. And then I also really do like Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. This shade is from her Hot Lips 2 collection. It's my favorite shade from that collection. I do have a whole video swatching every single shade that came out in the Hot Lips 2. So if you were thinking about picking up a shade, I put all of them on my lips. You can see them. And my favorite from the collection is JK Magic. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, line my lips and then fill them in. So this is what the lip combo looks like. I did mention Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks in my uh, other Sephora video, but I was talking about the Matte Revolution formula, Pillow Talk, and also uh, Very Victoria. And so I wanted to mention the Hot Lips 2 collection because uh, they're a little bit newer. I have that whole swatch video out there too. And of course, Charlotte Tilbury, a little bit more expensive lip products, but I really do like this combination. Uh, JK Magic is more of the, it's the um, kissing formula. So it has more of a creamy finish. Sometimes, especially when using liner, I'll take my lip and pat it in to help blend it into the liner but it also makes the lipstick look a little bit more matte which is my preference like if jk magic came in the matte revolution formula it would be like i would love it even more but i still really quite enjoy it in general so wanted to do that for my lip combination and after that that is going to wrap it up for this look and this video using some of my favorite products that you can find at sephora i hope that you guys enjoyed seeing me get this look and talking about a few more of these products that i would definitely recommend if you are still interested in shopping the sale again my first sephora video will be linked down below i'll put a couple other ones in there too since i have a lot of recent sephora videos also but I thought it'd be fun doing one where I'm actually showing you how I apply and use some of my favorites. So everything that I use will be linked down below as well. And I would love to get your comments on what you thought. But other than that, if you guys did enjoy this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. I hope that you also consider subscribing before you go. And I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.